and see. Hi, I'm Jarrett, and uh, we're in Seattle. We're going to interview some people at the 9-11 Visibility Project and uh, see how they got involved and uh, what they think is important to talk about. Uh, please state your name. My name is Chris Conrad. And how did you get involved? Um, I got involved. I, I started asking myself some questions as far as what I wanted to find out what was really going on in the world in general. I was disappointed with what I'd been learning in the media and such, so I started digging. And the first uh, video I watched was Control Room. And that kind of opened my eyes to, you know, the fact of, you know, what's going on in Iraq. Um, you know, there, there are real people that are being killed, you know. Um, and from there I just started digging and digging and digging. And I, then I happened upon a movie called 9-11 Mysteries. And about halfway through that movie, I just, all of a sudden, I mean, my, my eyes were woke, um, or my eyes, you know, just were completely opened up. So, you know, I knew in my gut that uh, that there was something fishy about 9-11. There was something fishy about those buildings falling apart as fast as they did. Um, I've worked in construction for four years, and that just didn't seem right to me and to some of my fellow construction workers. But uh, when, uh, you know, when I uh, watched 9-11 Mysteries and then subsequent, you know, all the searching, I mean, I spent four months solid, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours a day on the internet, you know, every single day just searching for answers, trying to find the truth, and you know what? You know, I mean, reading St Dr. Stephen Jones, his articles, um, uh, his theories on thermate and the explosives, and then really looking at those buildings falling apart, really looking at them with the idea of demolitions. I mean, they didn't even use demolitions in the 9-11 Commission report or NIST or FEMA. They didn't even, they didn't even think that maybe it was demolitions. They didn't even address um, that explosives could be used. You know, and, and that to me is just like, what? You know, that's just completely fishy. And so from there, I started, you know, started connecting, started networking, started, you know, looking out, you know, you know, watching all the, all the, uh, all the documentaries and, um, you know, um, checking into Alex Jones and so, and then from here, then I, you know, looked at my local groups, you know, is anybody else out there, you know, and then that's how I hooked up with, you know, Jared and I don't live in truth, you know. How do you feel about uh, what you found out there? When you say, is anybody else out there? How do, how do you feel about the people you found? Yeah. And how do you feel about the, uh, the network of support that you may have, that you found? Uh, I and mean, do you feel like, uh, like it's, it's not really that crazy? Do you feel like there's a lot of people who, who feel kind of like you do? No, I think that there are a lot of people out there. And there's a lot of people that just don't have facts because um, the media, the mainstream media, is blocking the access to the information. And so I think there's a lot of good people. And I think the support network, I mean, there's a lot of great people that I have met and that um, that I've talked to, that people that just you know are from the heart and they are they're real and you know they they're honest individuals. You know people that are just honest about their feelings. They don't have an agenda. They're not trying to you know people that are really you know focused on really trying to get this information out. You know and to me um, it's a real blessing in my life, you know, to know that there are other people out there. You know, it's not just me, I'm not just some crazy wacko. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I've never felt so alive. Uh, have you talked to your family and friends about it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. How, does your, how does your family feel? My, I have one sister who understands. I have another sister who kind of just nods, yeah. Um, my mother, I, she watched 9-11 Mysteries just recently and she was blown away. She's, you know, old school from Austria and she, um, she couldn't believe it. She just, it was the implications that really blew her away. Um, but, um, and friends, I'm trying to get a network with a guy right now. I'm trying to get this into his church right now. Um, but my friends also, they've, you know, they've woken up. But I've also, I mean, I've lost friends as well. So. Yeah. You know, I have friends that don't that don't want to, uh, you know, that don't want to hear. They don't want to. They don't want to open their eyes. You know, they want to live in denial. But that's okay. What do you think is uh, kind of the most important thing uh, here in uh, April 2007 regarding uh, what we should be doing uh, as a, as a people, as a country, as a as a, as a state, as a as a city. What do you think we should all be doing? What, what would you like to see more, more of? I want to see more community. I want to see people talking to each other. I want to see people um, not being, not a, it, focusing less on, on the monetary things and chasing after the carrot and, and people just networking and talking and 
and really getting real issues of what's going on. People, I mean, we, this government condones, condones torture. I mean, not to mention depleted uranium, you know? I mean, there are things that are so, un, so demonic that are happening in our name, you know? Um, that it's 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 abominable, and people need to stop. People need to stop sticking their head in the ground, and we need to stop. I mean, we need to start. We need to wake up and realize that this is this is by design. I mean, I don't know how far you know. I don't know everything, but what I do know is that you know, 9/11. There are unanswered questions in 9/11. If they lied about that, what else have they lied about? You know, so. That's the main thing that I think that people really need to wake up and understand. Yeah, I think it's the most powerful issue still. Yeah. What do you see happening uh, in, in pretty soon? Do you got any opinions about that, or what would you like to talk about? <laughs> um, they're probably going to put Hillary in office. I don't want her. I want Ron Paul, but um, they're probably going to put her in office. Um, I don't know how Bush is going to get away from this. They might kill him off. I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, um, it could very well be that there could be another terrorist attack before Bush, <laughs> before Bush leaves office. There could be another terrorist attack. There could be a nuke that's set off. It could be, you know, government-sponsored terrorism. People need to understand that. Watch, watch terrorist storm. There are other examples. You know, there's plenty of examples of government-sponsored terrorism. And quit, you know, when you talk, when you think about Iraq, look into the real information. You know, go and look at, you know, the, the documentaries on, on Iran. Excuse me, not Iraq, Iran. You know, look at what, you know, people are being demonizing. You know, even in the Christian movement, you know, people are, 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 are in Christianity, people are demonizing Iran like they're the worst thing in the world. That they're, you know, and it's the same thing we're seeing with, you know, with the Saddam Hussein thing. I mean, it's the same thing with Osama bin Laden. The same thing. Demonize them. They are, they are less than human. You know, and I mean, and the thing that we need, we need to be most careful of is that if something happens, something major, some major catalyst event like 9/11, some nuke going off, some other kind of, uh, some kind of terrorist attack, we need to not be stampeded, you know. It's the same thing when JFK got assassinated, you know, Eisenhower, Eisenhower said, you know, he said, I believe the American people will not be stampeded. I believe that they, I believe in the common sense of the American people. And you know what, these days, sometimes I really doubt it, but you know what, that's the one thing that we need to wake up to. We need to realize that these things are going to continue on until we step up, because no one's going to do it for us. No one's going to do it for us. We have to step up and say, no more, you know, no more. We're taking this country back. We need to take this country back. We need to take, you know, because the people that are in control, the people that are in control of our government right now, they're not for the people. They don't care anything about us, you know. And I, I don't agree with what's going on. I don't agree, you know. And it, I mean, it's. Birth of treason. Well, whatever the heck you want to talk about, man, do it. Uh, how I got to 9-11 truth. Back in the early 70s, uh, go back, back in 68, 69, I got out of Vietnam. And grew my hair long, Beatles, drugs. Uh, and I kept wondering how in the hell that the United States could fight a world war 20 years prior and we couldn't even destroy a little nation like Vietnam. Well, the more I looked at research and read Barry Goldwater and found out about things, uh, we were never meant to win that war. And come to find out that the reason we were there, the Gulf of Tonkin was a damn lie. Uh, we were never attacked, the Maddox was never attacked. It was to get us into war. Well, over the years, things keep happening. Uh, the barbecue at Waco, the Murr building in Oklahoma City, and all these discrepancies keep popping up. And then the first moment I saw the Jets there, I said, this is impossible. And throughout the years, uh, these coincidences, as I said, kept popping up. And you delve into them and you find out the same group of people were involved with those that 
we seem to be able to prove are responsible for 9-11. And to me, if we can stop this ongoing totalitarian police state from forming, we, the American people, are going to be a hell of a lot better off. And that's why I want to be in. You got any ideas how to do that? Is that it? Uh, hi. hi. <laughs> My name is Michael Hager, and uh, I'm a member of the Seattle 9-11 Truth Group. And one of the things that I wanted to share is uh, uh, I've only really known about the issues of 9-11 for about a year. And any time I talk to somebody about it, I, I try to remember how did I feel when I first heard about it. And I first heard about 9-11 from my son, who's about 24 years old. And literally for months, I thought he was mentally unstable for thinking these things. And, uh, and, and we talked and we argued and I was concerned about him because it was just incredibly unbelievable that this could have happened. And as I began to look and research myself, trying to find good reasons to show him how wrong he was, he actually showed me how right he was. And at that moment, I recognized how difficult it is to even to come to grips with this. So anytime I try to talk with anybody, the very first thing I try to confess is that I couldn't believe it either. I couldn't believe it. Even when somebody who I loved and respected was telling me about it, it wasn't until I saw a few key photographs of the Pentagon, saw the towers fall again, that I remembered that that it didn't look right at the time I first saw it, and began to put these things together. So that's really all I have to share. It's just that very important thing that anybody that I talk to, I have to be very sensitive to the fact that it's, it's, it's horrific what happened. They were very good at how they brainwashed us into not worrying about this and thinking about this. And so I have to try to be careful and slow with anybody I begin to talk with about it. And I, very first thing I say is, look, I don't believe it either. You know, it's hard to believe. At least look at these things and begin to explore. And that's about my very best suggestion for anybody getting started talking with anybody about 9-11. Thank you. All right, let's see. Uh Okay, so I'm uh, waiting for people to come out, and uh, I'm Jared, and uh, I've uh, found out about 9/11. I uh, found out about a year ago. Um, it was uh, it was April 1st, actually, April Fool's Day, 2006. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I used to listen to NPR all the time, and I uh, used to think that I knew something about the world because they'd always talk about the heads of state and the diplomats and the ministers and all that, and I uh, thought that I was, you know, getting a handle on things. But, uh, and I listened all the time. My girlfriend at the time, she said uh, that it was a bunch of crap. And so uh, she told me to listen to this other show, which was Mind Over Matters at kexp.org. Uh, it's our local uh, 90.3 FM radio station. And uh, it was a collection of um, public affairs programming on uh, Saturdays and Sundays at 6 a.m. until 9 a.m. And um, so I started listening to that, and after a few months of that, then uh, in, in Seattle we had these speakers this weekend, um, uh, and it was Barry Zwicker and Webster Tarpley. And I was kind of sleeping in the morning of a Saturday, and uh, I bolted upright in bed because I heard a man talking about, um, about uh, B-52s, I think, uh, fully loaded with uh, nuclear tipped warheads flying over Russia at 4 a.m. And that struck me right away that, uh, well, if it was 4 a.m. and the buildings fell at like, you know, 9 or 10 or something in the morning, you know, that was, that was before the first plane hit. So I knew that if that was true, then there was something really wrong. Uh, so uh, anyway, then I looked online and found Loose Change and watched it, and my heart didn't stop beating all night. And uh, I've been uh, doing everything I can for the last year, trying to um, share the information. A lot of my friends, they, they don't want to hear about it. And um, one of my best friends just said, uh, for me to leave them alone. 
And that's Excuse it. Me? Yes, sir. Did you know who closed these doors? Uh, that was me. Okay, you did not do that. So